Hello guys, it's Christina Simrelli. Welcome to my second channel. You probably know me from my main channel, Simrelli, the band I'm in with my sisters. This is my personal channel where I talk a lot more about motherhood stuff and, I don't know, motivation, inspiration, lots of other stuff. So, mainly motherhood though. So today I am doing a video that I've been planning to make for like two years and I just never made it. I didn't want to like face it really. But I realized since it's coming up on the two year anniversary of my miscarriage that it's like a perfect time to make this. So I dove in today and I prepared the video and I feel really good about it and I'm ready to share with you guys how I got through my miscarriage, how I dealt with it. So just jumping right onto the video, I had a miscarriage with my first pregnancy my first baby in October of 2019, on October 12th to be specific. And I was almost eight weeks. I hadn't even gone to the doctor yet. I just had lots of positive tests and I had my um, doctor's appointment coming up like that next week. So I am I have like the whole story and everything in two different videos where I go really in depth in one and then the other one's more of like an overall, they're both really good videos. I would watch them both probably. And then I have a video about pregnancy after miscarriage. So I'm gonna link all of those in my description if you want to watch um, other videos on this. But, so I'm not gonna go to that whole story right now because it's already in those videos. So I had that miscarriage then and it was an incredibly emotional experience. I feel like, and I've heard from others say this to me, that I um, I think I dealt with it really well um, in like a, as healthy a way as I could possibly imagine. And I've had a lot of people ask me to please share with them um, how I did that, my advice on that. So I'm just gonna tell you what I did, how I did it. There's definitely no like perfect right way to do this. Um, I'm just sharing my experience in hopes that if you are going through something this difficult, you will get something out of this and it will help you. So let me consult my notes. All right, um, I do wanna say be very sensitive and gentle in the comments. I'm gonna delete anything that might be like hurtful because this is a really, sensitive and painful topic. So there just won't be any tolerating anything other than sensitivity and compassion in the comments. So I remember after miscarrying, there were several thoughts that um, were constantly like plaguing my mind, I would say, that were very painful. So I wanna go over what those were and then basically how I dealt with those and then other things that I did that helped. So here are some common things. I think it's common for everyone to feel after a miscarriage. My body failed me. I just went through an absolutely horrible experience with no redeeming anything. No good, no good to it, nothing good. Just pure bad. My baby is gone forever and there's no connection that will ever be had between myself and this baby. And I just got pregnant for nothing. That was just a waste of time. That was just such a painful waste of time. And then of course, other things like, I shouldn't feel this, I should feel this, I shouldn't be mad about that. I should ignore it, I should move on. It wasn't a big deal, blah, blah, blah. Invalidating thoughts about your emotions. So I wanna address all of those because those came into my head and I wanna tell you what I did when they came in my head. So first of all, my body failed me. If you go around, well for me, if I went around all day just thinking my body failed me and I was gonna be trying to get pregnant again after this miscarriage, that would not help me at all. So I thought about it and I thought, okay, I could look at it as my body failed me, my body wasn't a safe place for my baby or I could look at it as my body, um, started to give the gift of life and it succeeded in the beginning and then something happened and my body picked up on the fact that something had happened, something had gone wrong and then my body helped to birth the baby. This can happen in a lot of different ways um, in your miscarriage, but for me, it was just a, honestly, it was just like a natural, unmedicated, seven-week birth. 
not what you want, obviously. And my body was doing what it was supposed to do in that moment. It was helping the baby out to prepare the womb again for life. So I chose to focus on that. I focused on the fact that my body did what it was supposed to do once things didn't go right and my body is still working. And then I did find out that I had a blood, well, two blood clotting disorders. I got diagnosed with those after this miscarriage and treated those in my next pregnancy, which went on to be a full term pregnancy ending in a healthy baby. So we caught that because of the miscarriage. So I was grateful for that. Okay, the thought of, I just went through this horrible experience, it's just all bad. Seeing the experience as all bad. I know this is kind of weird, but I didn't end up seeing it as all bad in the end. Even though it was so much pain, so much pain, and it was very difficult, there were things I was grateful for from it. I was grateful to know that I could get pregnant and that I did get pregnant. I was grateful that I had the chance to carry a baby even for just a few weeks. I was grateful for that because I was thinking, wow, like this is an honor. I carried a human being inside of me. I didn't want to, I didn't want to forget how much of an honor that was and how big of a deal that was because I lost the baby. I didn't want to discount the miracle that had occurred inside me. So I did feel grateful about that and like proud of my body for that. And I felt strong and weak at the same time after the miscarriage. I felt so weak in so many ways. And I also felt so strong because I couldn't believe I had made it through that. I made it through the labor and delivery that I experienced of delivering my miscarried child, which for me, I talk about that in um, in one of the videos if you wanna watch that. But I was proud that I went through that because my body like really did that. And I felt like this strength afterwards and this like connection with anyone else who's ever gone through that. I felt this weird sense of peace afterwards, which is really weird because I also felt the opposite. There are so many emotions that can coexist in these painful experiences and we can't really make sense of them. We just, I think, just gotta accept that they're all there and it's okay. But anyway, by acknowledging the positives in the situation, not in a toxic positivity kind of way, just in a trying to be real kind of way. I was very much acknowledging that I had so much pain, but I also acknowledged any of the positive things I could find. And it it made, I guess I was seeing the experience more as a whole and I was, ex I was seeing it more accurately, I think. And that kind of changed the way that I healed, I think. And by the way, if you don't see any of those things, that is okay. <laughs> This is not the time to beat yourself up. Actually, there's never the time to beat yourself up, but this is especially not the time to beat yourself up. You just lost your child. You do not need to be telling yourself you should feel this or you shouldn't feel that. You should feel more or you should feel less. This is the time to just take whatever comes, to take it and accept it and say, everything I'm feeling is okay. If I have to cry, I'm going to cry. If I have a moment where I forget about it and I'm laughing about something else, that's okay. Everything that you feel is okay. Okay, and then like the feeling of my baby's gone forever. There's, we'll never have any connection. Okay, yes, my baby was gone from this earth forever, but there was an interesting way. Because of my faith, I had a, a way of looking at it that was felt kind of healing to me. I pictured the soul leaving my baby's body, which I held my baby, it was, incredibly incredibly small it really it was like a I get it looked like it was like about a six week old baby five or six weeks even though like it had stopped um developing after that point so I didn't know you could hold a five or six week old baby which is like as almost as small as they get you can I held it but anyway that's in my video I pictured the soul leaving and the fact that I wasn't I was holding my baby's body but my baby was the soul the soul is who they are and their soul in my beliefs was in heaven and i was just holding the body they had left behind so i can still think about my baby which i do i mean when i gave birth to barrett in the hospital right afterwards it hit me so hard that i had miscarried it hit me over a year later like oh my gosh my baby would have been like this, like this big, this old. I could have held them like this. It hit me really hard and I cried 
for my miscarried baby after I gave birth to Barrett. It was a really emotional experience, but I, I still felt connected to that baby in a way. And I still now can think, I think of my baby in heaven and I feel this like small connection. So I don't feel like they're like just gone, disappeared, poof, gone. I feel like they're gone from this earth, but they still are somewhere, okay, heaven in my mind. That's my beliefs. And then the feeling of I got pregnant for nothing and this is a waste of time. See, that sounds like kind of a bad thing to say out loud, doesn't it? But you know, your thoughts just and your feelings just happen, so. I didn't like thinking that. I didn't like thinking I just wasted my time on you to my child, even though I never really like met, met my child when they were, had a beating heart and breathing lungs. But I didn't like the idea of saying your life, oh, I'm gonna cry. I don't like the idea of saying your life, even though it was only a few weeks, was worth nothing. So the way that I thought about it was, who am I to say a life is worth more when it's years versus weeks or months? I mean, tell that to a mom who's lost her child who's a few months old. I just can't say your life didn't mean anything just because it was a few weeks old and I didn't really get to be with you outside the womb. So I decided to look at it as I had the honor of carrying you for several weeks. I was excited during those weeks. Well, and I was scared, lots of emotions. And I treasure your life. I think that it is valuable. It was valuable. It did have worth and it wouldn't have more worth if I had actually been able to give birth to you full term and healthy. And that thought was very healing for me because it helped in my, in my next pregnancy as well, because then I got scared. Like, I don't want to get excited about now Barrett in the womb, because what if I lose him? And then I realized if I don't get excited about him, I'm just going to be terrified every day, be repressing excitement every day instead of saying I am excited about you your life means something to me that's why I'm excited because your life means something to me I can't change that your life means something to me I value it I'm excited about it and if I only get to carry you for weeks or months that's still an honor because your life means something to me I think that mindset helped me a lot acknowledging that my baby's life means something to me because that's the terrifying thing that I think we kind of want to avoid um, to be like, oh, it didn't mean that much because it w was only a few weeks or months thinking that maybe it will make the pain go away. But it's more just denying the truth that it did mean something to you and that's why it hurts. And that's okay. It's okay that it meant something to you and it's okay that it hurts. <sighs> Accepting both of them is what helped me heal. Now I'm going to tell you some things that I did besides like the mindset things that really helped me. Talking about it. It sucks that there's such a stigma around miscarriage, but I understand because sometimes you just, you feel ashamed. You shouldn't feel ashamed, but sometimes you do feel ashamed and you don't want to say anything to anyone. There's a many reasons why you wouldn't want to say anything, but I told all my friends, I told the internet, I told millions of people, I told my family, obviously, and I talked about it. I told everyone who wanted to know the story and it really helped me. It helped me talk through it, process it, see people being um, empathetic and compassionate with me. It really helped me heal. Sharing it and then hearing your guys' stories, that was also incredibly healing. That's also with my birth trauma as well, something I'll talk about in another video. Um, hearing your guys' stories of birth trauma and your validation was so healing. Don't underestimate the power of community when it comes to healing. And that's like support groups, um, joining support groups. I did join one and it was very helpful to see other experiences and hear other stories. So I set some ground rules with Nick right after I miscarried. I said, we need to just let ourselves feel everything. We need to not put limits on ourselves or say like, oh, we have to be strong or we have to be happy or we have to be whatever. If we feel like crying, we need to cry. If we feel like talking about it, we need to talk to each other about it. We can't 
limit ourselves in the grieving process. We need to just let ourselves feel everything. And we definitely followed through on that. I have so many memories of crying in the shower or going to Nick and saying, Nick, I'm really sad. I miss the baby. And it's just so weird. Like, how can you miss someone you never knew you carried in your womb for a few weeks? But that's just real. You can. I felt a connection to the baby and I missed the baby. So I accepted it and I just let myself feel it. I also decided that I will not be ashamed of going through this because I had heard that there was just so much shame associated with miscarriage. And that's just so sad to me that so many women have to carry this shame with them. You already lost your child and now you're shaming yourself. So I decided I was not gonna shame myself and I was not gonna let anyone shame me. And any feelings or thoughts of shame that came up, I was going to not accept basically. And it definitely worked. I really built up that belief that I have nothing to be ashamed of. This is a part of life for a lot of people. And I was going through something that was unfortunately pretty normal. Now, my mom told me, my mom had gone through um, four miscarriages, five children because one was twins. Um, she had told me I should name the baby and do like a burial service kind of thing. So um, Nick and I, we went to church like right after and we baptized the baby in my um, beliefs, um, Catholicism. That's what we did. And we named the baby and buried the baby afterwards. I don't wanna to talk too much about it because it's a very intimate, personal, private experience, very powerful. And it was so healing. Like I can't even tell you guys, it was so healing. And I think I know why. It was a very traumatic experience, obviously miscarrying and as uh, as soon as it was over, I, I just flashed back all day long, kept flashing back, um, actually for a long time after. I had all these flashbacks and I would flash back to the bathroom, to the shower, to fainting, to the pain, to holding the baby, to crying with Nick, to all these different things. And after we buried the baby, as soon as a flashback would start, it wouldn't just end in pain it would end in the burial because that was part of the story now i was adding a peaceful moment and a moment of closure to the story and it really did bring me closure every time the flashback would start it would end in peace it was an amazing amazing experience i felt god so strongly with me through this experience i can't even explain it it was just like i totally surrendered and gave up and it was like I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what I'm doing here. I've never been through this before, God. This is the most powerfully painful and loving experience of my life. I felt so much love for the baby and so much pain at the same time. I just surrendered to God and I really felt like he carried me through this. I felt so much peace in so many moments that just didn't make sense. So I definitely do recommend um, doing those kind of things like naming a uh, bearing the baby or any any kind of thing you can think of that can bring some closure to the situation. It was like instrumental in my mental health in that period, I would say. <sighs> Music can be really helpful. We went on tour, unfortunately, right after I miscarried. I talk about this in one of the videos linked below. And the song, The Night We Met, oh my gosh, it killed me. The lyrics, I had all and then most of you, some and now none of you. Oh my gosh, they just like ripped through my heart. And every time we sang it, I would picture my baby. I would picture the miscarriage and I would just cry and sing it. But it was so, so healing, so healing. Just letting those feelings out with those words. I don't know how to explain it, but man, it just helped the feelings come through me. And I just felt like this I don't know, singing it in the room with all these people too, it was just like, I don't know how to explain it, but it was a very healing experience. So I do recommend finding a song that you really relate to in the situation um, and just letting your emotions out to it. That goes for all emotional situations, honestly. Music can be so helpful. And lastly, I just wanna say, if you're going through this right now, you just went through it, you're going through anything really difficult in your life, I I totally feel you. 
And I know what it feels like to think like you have nothing left in you. You don't know how you're going to make it through this. You don't know how tomorrow's ever going to be better. Tomorrow can be better. We don't know which tomorrow, but tomorrow can and will be better. You are so much stronger than you think. You can lean on God and God's strength and he will carry you through. He will come in in the last moment when you think you don't know how you're going to make it and he will carry you through. You do not have to depend on yourself. Reach out to other people. Reach out to God. Know that you don't know your limits and you don't know how strong you actually are and you don't know what God's going to do. So I know things can feel hopeless and confusing and you can be so mad and just wonder why is this happening? When will this be over? When will I feel better again? When will I feel like myself? Will things ever get better again? I've been through this so many times in my life, that hopeless, hopeless feeling. And I just want to tell you that hope never dies. It's always there, like waiting to be reignited. Keep trying, keep moving forward, keep going. Things will get better, things will change. Something will happen. You just don't know what it will be. But never, ever, ever give up on yourself. Never give up on yourself. You may not feel like it, but you have what it takes inside of you to make it through. And for me, that is praying and asking God for help. Let me know any other topics you guys would like me to talk about. I really hope this was helpful for you. Man, life is just crazy, right? All these intense, intense experiences as you get older, they just get more intense and more frequent. But luckily, as we get older, we're stronger and we're wiser. And we need that to get through life. Thank goodness God is here. <laughs> All right, if you guys want to hear more, subscribe. Let me know what you want to hear. And I read the comments, so thank you so much. I'm praying for everyone going through this. Good luck. Leave an encouraging comment if you if you feel so inclined. Leave an encouraging comment. People would probably love to read it. We need some encouraging comment sections, not toxic ones. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video.